A portrait of the artist as a young man, Ulysses. Both novels focus on the same protagonist, Stephen Dedalus. A portrait of the artist as a young man is a novel of self-development that describes, from his childhood to his adulthood, the development of a young Dubliner, Stephen, that we can consider Joyce's alter ego. Like Joyce, Stephen is educated in a Jesuit college. In these years, he faces the strict authority of his tutors, the bullying of his mates, and he realizes that he is not comfortable in that condition. He has to rebel. Non serviam, I will not serve, becomes his motto. He rebels against the three basic principles, religion, motherland, family. One day, Stephen is on the seaside and for the first time he is captured by the beauty of the sea and of nature around him. This feeling of satisfaction in front of beauty was for him an epiphany, a revelation. He understands that he has to become the prophet of beauty, even at the cost of his total rebellion. His name itself has a symbolic meaning. Stephen is the first martyr. He was stoned to death for preaching because he was against orthodoxy. Daedalus created wax wings in order to escape from the labyrinth of the Minotaur and he challenged the human limits because he learned to fly. Stephen understands that he has to go on a voluntary exile and moves to Paris, like Joyce, in order to fulfill his dream of becoming a true artist. Stephen Daedalus is a bridge between a portrait of the artist as a young man and Ulysses, because Ulysses starts when Stephen comes back to Dublin from Paris. Stephen has lost his father figure, because after his exile, he now has no contact with his father Simon. Now Stephen is a history teacher, and obviously he is dissatisfied with his life in Dublin. One evening, Stephen gets involved in a fight with an English soldier. Another Dubliner, named Leopold Bloom, saves him and takes him to his house. Stephen and Leopold are 22 and 38 years old. These are two symbolic ages for Joyce, because they represent the years when he moved to Trieste and then when he left Italy and moved to Zurich. Leopold is a Jew of Hungarian origins. He has suffered two emotional crises, the loss of his son and the suicide of his father. Leopold also has to deal with the infidelity of his wife Molly, a singer that has a relation with her manager Blazes Boylan. Leopold knows about her infidelity and tries to console himself with an epistolary relation with another woman using a fake name. This table shows the 18 chapters into which Ulysses is divided. The chapters of Ulysses correspond to those of Homer's Odyssey, according to the mythical method. The action covers 24 hours on an ordinary day in Dublin, June the 16th, 1904. Joyce chose the date as it was the date of his first outing with his wife-to-be, Nora Barnacle. As we can see from the chart, the 24 hours have been divided into episodes. Each one corresponds to an episode of Homer's Odyssey. For example, the chapter in which Leopold has to go to Paddy Dignam's funeral, but he misses it, corresponds to the episode in which Ulysses goes down to the realm of Hades. The last chapter, dedicated to Penelope, contains Molly's famous interior monologue, 
in which she remembers about her youth in Gibraltar and clearly mentions her infidelity. According to the mythical method, this is in contrast with the absolute loyalty of Penelope in Homer's epic poem. The three protagonists, Leopold, Molly and Stephen, are the modern versions of mythical Ulysses, Penelope, Telemachus. The 20th century versions have lost their mythical value. Ulysses was the insatiable traveller, whereas Leopold is a simple advertising canvasser. The faithful bride, Penelope, has now become an untrustworthy woman. The character of Leopold Bloom was largely inspired to Joyce by his friend Ettore Schmidt, Italo Svevo. As an Irish and as a Christian, Joyce had never had the chance to meet any real Jewish people. Then he moved to Trieste, an important city in the austrian hungaric Empire, a place where Christian, Jewish and Islamic religions coexisted in peace. There's a synagogue, a mosque and a church in Trieste. He made friends with lots of Jews, in particular with Ettore Schmidt, who had recently published his second novel, Semilita, which was rather unsuccessful. Joyce encouraged him to go on publishing, and Schmidt wrote his third and best-known novel, La Coscienza di Zeno. Joyce was eager to learn as much as possible about Judaism, and Schmidt was there to provide him with information and inspiration. Three famous quotations of uh, James Joyce about Ulysses. I want to give a picture of Dublin so complete that if the city one day suddenly disappeared from the earth, it could be reconstructed out of my book. E l'epopea di due razze, Israele, Irlanda, e nel medesimo tempo il ciclo del corpo umano ed anche la storiella di una giornata, una vita. La mia intenzione è di rendere il mito subspecie temporis nostri. I have put in so many enigmas and puzzles that it will keep the professors busy for centuries arguing over what I meant, and that's the only way of ensuring one's immortality. Why have you written the book this way? To keep the critics busy for 300 years.